Hi, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing, and this is a second generation Intel Compute Stick. It's a tiny computer with 2 gigabytes of RAM, 32 gigabytes of storage, an Intel Atom Cherry Trail processor, and two full-size USB ports, one micro USB port, power button over here, and a micro SD card slot on the back. This particular version came with Windows 10 preloaded, but Intel also has a version that has no operating system pre-installed. And both of them, you can load your own operating system. It's a little bit tricky, and some uh, features may or may not work, but I want to show you how you can get Ubuntu uh, Linux to run on it using this USB flash drive. Uh, it, this flash drive is basically prepared with a bootable version of Ubuntu. You can find instructions for doing that at lilliputing.com. There's actually a number of different methods for preparing that by just downloading the disk image and putting it onto a, a card. This should work with other versions of Linux, with uh, Android, with uh, Remix OS and other operating systems, and you can find some more details about that as well at lilliputing.com. Uh, but in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and plug in the USB flash drive. I'm also going to plug in a USB hub, and then I'm going to plug this whole thing into the back of a computer, or into the back of a display using that HDMI connector, and turn on the power. Let's go ahead and angle you up so you can see the screen. You can find a review of the full Windows version at lilliputing.com as well. Now from here, I'm going to hit F2 so that I can show you some options that come up here from sort of the BIOS settings. Out of the box, if you have the Windows model, odds are under configuration, it's going to say Windows 32-bit. You want to change that to 64-bit if you're running Ubuntu or some other operating systems because they're not going to work with the 32-bit version. When you switch to 64-bit, though, Windows won't boot, so you'll have to switch back if you want to boot back into Windows. Right now, we're not installing Ubuntu, we're just going to run it from the flash drive, so no damage should be done to the, uh, to the system. And then from here, you can see that you also will have a boot order uh, options. Uh, this is, it depends on whether you want to set it up to automatically boot from the USB flash drive. You can do that here, but you don't necessarily need to. So exit, save changes and exit, Y for yes. And from here, you can hit F10 to get to the boot options menu. Although if you set it up to automatically boot from USB flash first, you shouldn't have to. Now we have the option to try Ubuntu, install Ubuntu, or OEM install. I'm gonna go ahead and try without installing. Angle this up so you can see the top of the screen. And you might have to sort of turn off the power or turn back on the power a couple of times to get this to work properly. The first few times I tried running Ubuntu from a flash drive, it just didn't work. You also might need to switch USB flash drives. So um, the sort of results might vary, but uh, with this particular flash drive and this particular setup, I've had a pretty decent run of successes here. So hopefully we'll boot into Ubuntu and I can just sort of show you a couple of quick features. One thing that's worth noting is that out of the box, Wi-Fi seems to work with Ubuntu 15.10. Uh, graphics seem to work just fine. Audio via HDMI does not work, and that means that this TV is not going to play any audio, but there are a couple of really simple solutions for that. Uh, one is to use a USB audio adapter, and I'll show you that in a moment. Another is to, uh, to just try something like a Bluetooth speaker, which seems to work perfectly. We're a little bit blurry here, but it does work. Okay, so we're connected, or we're, uh, we're booted up. I'm going to go ahead and connect to the internet. I found for some reason I often have to do this twice before it actually connects, but it does it does have a pretty strong connection. And uh, as mentioned in the Windows version, in the in the full review of the Compute Stick featuring Windows 10, uh, one of the key differences here, the, the processor performance isn't really that much different from the first generation Compute Stick, but the Wi-Fi performance makes it almost like using a wholly different computer. Um, the range, the signal, the speed, is it's all just much, much faster. All right, so it didn't connect, but we're gonna just do that one more time and now we're connected, go figure. So I'm gonna go ahead and fire up a web browser. And bring up a YouTube video just as a quick demo.
So again, video is working just fine, but we're not hearing any sound. Now, one of the simplest ways around that is to buy something like this Sabrent USB audio adapter. Uh, I picked this up from Amazon for about $7. You can just plug it into the USB hub or use an adapter to plug it into the, uh, the stick itself. It's a little bit too thick to, uh, to plug it in and still have access to the other USB port on the uh, device. So you'll need either an extension cable or a USB hub. But once this is plugged in, you have a microphone and headphone jack. And I did verify that it works just fine with headphones. But that doesn't necessarily help me out here with playing audio that I can hear on the TV or let other people hear. So plan B, we're going to go ahead and plug in or connect a YouTube, sorry, a Bluetooth speaker. The Bluetooth device is ready to pair. And up in Ubuntu options, we're just going to go to Bluetooth settings. Add a device. Bluetooth speaker. Next. The Bluetooth device is connected successfully. And now, if we go to audio settings, or the sound settings, you should see that in addition to SPDIF and USB, we've got Bluetooth. And that's it. So let's go ahead and press this so you can see. And now we can hear audio coming from there. And that was actually very well timed. I didn't mean for it to say that's it, but that is it. Should be powering up shortly. Andy, if you don't want to use up all the space that's on the device, and that's that's important because there's only 32 gigabytes of built-in storage on the compute stick. I'm just going to go ahead and mute this so you can hear me talk. Um, there's only 32 gigabytes of built-in storage, and only 19 or so. Now for some reason, it's only showing three. Uh, 360p video. Let's see if uh, other videos work any better. Presenting the Multiroom Audio System by Multiroom, a complete wireless music solution for your home with up to five connected wireless. Hi, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing, and this is not a Chromecast audio. It looks like one, but it's called an AudioCast. And it's a All right, so 360p video is working just fine. Uh, it seems that it's uh, not detecting the right web browser. So switching to different web browser uh, options might help with the video playback. But for the most part, things seem to work. Um, and again, this is just sort of a quick demo to show that it's possible to get Ubuntu to run, that it works properly. Um, if you want to go into more advanced details about how to optimize your settings and performance, uh, that would probably uh, be a whole other video and, and uh, more work. But you can see we are connected to the internet. It's working pretty well. We can stream content, including audio and video content. Firefox works out of the box. Office software like LibreOffice should also work out of the box. And thanks to the fact that it's uh, got an Intel Atom processor as opposed to an ARM-based chip, um, most things really should be pretty well optimized. Now, performance isn't going to be stellar. It is a low-power processor. This is a device that sells for around $150, but it is uh, pretty capable of running other operating systems as well as Windows, and that's really what I wanted to show here. So again, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing, taking a look at the Intel Compute Stick, second generation with an Intel Atom Cherry Trail processor running Ubuntu 15.10 Linux, and uh, the steps that I followed for installing it should be pretty similar to the steps for installing other operating systems, but you can find more details and links at lilliputing.com.